This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and how you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Ibachi Talk. This is going to be fun today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin mining in more detail than you could possibly want. But we're going to make it so that actually you can actually understand it and not open up your own mining farm unless you got a boatload of money. Anyway, I got Andrew, the security guy, hey, with everybody. me. Aloha. He's not feeling well. He's a little under the weather. Oh, eh. Too much, too much, too much time. And I got JD. Jay Maurice, yeah. but I also affectionately call him JD because we go back since your first birthday. We've known you for long. You're the ultimate consummate tech guru guy that I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah. I watched you grow up through this whole industry. And we'll, we'll talk about what you've done and we'll talk about what's happening in the Bitcoin mining space because you've been there, done that. So we're going to hear it from someone who's been there firsthand. So grab a libation, pull up a chair, sit down. We're going to talk about yep. Bitcoin mining past, present, and future. Oh, and um. Happy, happy, New, happy New happy Year, New everybody. Year. That's right. Happy you know, have, a, right. have a great New Year. <laughs> Cheers. JD flew all the way in from Japan just to be on this show. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> true. So, hang on. Anyway, so, JD, a little bit, little, little bit of background on yourself, because um, where'd you grow up? I'm from Honolulu. So, you grew up in Honolulu. And uh, my family... You were the, uh, oh, the president of the board of the condominium that the, we lived in. That's right. So my family and you go Your grandparents. way back, yes. And uh, I've been told you attended my first birthday party. I did. I attended your first. And John Young gave you a piece of uh, artwork. I hope you still have it. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, John Young. I got a lot of John Youngs, actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So that's a, he's a, uh, rest his soul, has a, was a great artist here in Hawaii. For sure. Your mom is a special lady, too. Unfortunately, she's not. Well, she's watching down on us right now. But so. For sure. I'm sure she is. Yeah. yeah. So cool guy. But you've always been in tech. I've always been in tech. I started, uh, I, I'd say I dropped out of school at 14 to work at a internet startup downtown. And Here. what was that startup? That was called Pacific Interactive at the time, but then it was known as Systemetrics later on. Yeah. Wow. So Earl he Ford. Worked for Earl? Worked for Earl told you so to drop out of school? Don't do the head shake and the eye wow. flash. Wow. We love Earl, but I mean, geez, 14 He gave me my first job. Were you like an intern? You an intern I was an intern at sure. 14 at Systemetrics. At 14. That's awesome. Yeah. At 14. You were in Pacific Business News at one time, if I recall. Yeah, I had this crazy idea to build a whole bunch of servers in the Pihana Pacific Data Center. Which is Los the Angeles. Our Fortress Today, yeah. re resurrected. Yes. Pihana wow. Pacific, then Equinix, then DR Fortress. Sure. Yeah. So we're talking to this young man. This young man, has, this young man has grown up in this industry here. Sounds like it. True. And then I moved to Tokyo when I was 20 years old. Yeah. And I think I had something to do with that. Yeah? Yeah, I think you did, actually. That house party. <laughs> that house party. Yeah. What happened? You got even in trouble? We had a little house party, and he got into, introduced to a number of ladies from Japan. Oh, I see. So he chased, <laughs> chased, chased some interests. And now you Japan. speak and write Japanese fluently. Well, I've lived in Tokyo for about 12 years. Okay. And I had a lot of time to pick it up. And uh, also been on the countryside recently, so. Yeah. And you, you well, know, know. when you moved there, you just fell in love with the culture, the. Yeah, I mean, Tokyo is such a great city, and it's like the biggest metropolitan area in the whole world, and they have everything. They have huge companies and, uh, you know, international business, everything, the culture, everything, the language. Everyone's so polite like Hawaii, but it's on a much larger scale. Yeah, I, I've always felt when you moved there that that, that was going to be your spot. And so, and yeah. I met your fiance the other, other right. day there, lovely young lady. So that's congratulations on that. So tremendous future ahead wow. of you and you're still so young. Yeah. So, and you were actually, you know, when I, when I was, became the director of IT for the city and county of Honolulu okay. at the swearing in ceremony, JD showed up right on. and he was of there. Of course, he I was, was there. He couldn't believe you actually made it. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't either. <laughs> He wasn't sure <laughs> if he was really seeing what was going on. Nice. But he was, I have a picture of him and the, the, you know, with Mufi and the, the whole gang. That's right. So That's right. It's great to have you there. So, so let's kind of jump now into the, into the tech side. So, yeah, you know, you've been in tech, you built service farms. So what did you do in Japan? But we're going to do that. Keep that short because I want to talk about Bitcoin mining. So when I first got to Tokyo, I opened up my little consulting office and I had some consulting customers in Hawaii, but I didn't really know the Japanese language or the culture. I wasn't connected to anyone. And so I got a job at a Norwegian software company called Opera Software. Oh, 
very famous. Yeah, making web browsers, yep. and uh, I worked with all their Japanese customers. So okay. every Japanese TV, we worked with like Nintendo, Wii, Panasonic, Blu-ray players, all these random Japanese devices. We would make the web browsers. Okay. They and wrote the Opera software that was the web browsers for all of those. Yeah, they they made the soft they made the browser in Norway, and we would port it to their you know proprietary cheap uh, CPUs. Oh, their chip. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we would deliver the browser to the customers in Japan, and uh, did that for a few years. Okay, so you did that for a few years, and let's just let's fast forward. And when did you first start getting involved in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? I guess about five year, five or six years ago, um, during the Mt. Gox days. Um, it, Mt. Gox was a yeah, the first big one, right? They yeah. went belly up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got my first Bitcoin at about eight dollars, but I didn't get into it more serious <laughs> until eight dollars. Yeah, it's fifteen thousand and change right now. Anyway, go eight dollars. Yeah, so I started getting into more serious when it was around a hundred dollars. Um, me and a few friends um, at the time, Mount Gox was uh, well. They had some issues to say the least, and uh, yeah. uh, you couldn't withdraw. Um, you couldn't deposit money to them very quickly for a number of reasons, unless you had a Japanese bank account because they were based in Tokyo. Okay. So I was able to get funds into Mount Gox very quickly purchase Bitcoins um, and basically do some arbitrage trading. This is when Bitcoin was around hundred dollars. Yeah. And we kept doing that a few times. We would make 10, 20, 30 percent a week just doing <laughs> arbitrage, arbitrage. Wow. Until the music stopped and Mt. Gox just kind of shut down. It went, yeah. went belly up. Yeah, so everyone... Uh, what happened to Bitcoin? I don't, what happened to it? They did it. What, did, what did it dropped it? I mean, it, it spiked up to about $1,200. Mm -hmm. That was the peak of that bubble, and then when Mt. Gox crashed, it just crashed all the way back down to a couple hundred like bucks. Like pennies, or always oh, a couple hundred bucks. Okay, yeah, so it wasn't dead, but... Right, but all of our Bitcoins were in Mt. Gox. Yeah, that was yeah. the problem. And the problem is they yeah. couldn't get them out. Yeah. Well, they were already gone. Yeah, yeah. so they it's, not like, it's not <laughs> they, like there's they not had, an FI. They had taken them away. Yeah, yeah they were No hacked. insurance behind the, behind the Bitcoin. It didn't help sure. solidify that as a particular form of uh, fiat-like currency. And also, there was the, I think there was that, that in the broader industry now, there was a lot of illicit things going on at Mt. Gox so, that they were selling, right? So there was, everybody thought, well, that's what that's all about. Like, you know, the broader... Yeah, those days People Bitcoin, that didn't know, didn't Spice know. Spice Road and all those days. Those days are gone. Yeah. Right, Silk Road, yeah. yeah Silk, I'm sorry, Silk Road. Well, I think the, the darknet markets are stronger than ever, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you shut down Silk Road, then 20 or 30 other will open Smaller up. Smaller ones have showed up. Yeah, and I think that market is, is probably doing just... I'd say it's doing fine in ransomware. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is in that space. So then well, when did you get... Um, when did you get into the mine? Because you were an early miner of Bitcoin. Oh. Was it? No, Ethereum. Well, I started just as a hobby with Bitcoin. Okay. And the first serious um, mining farm I did was Ethereum. Ethereum. So we have a picture. I'm going to show you a picture of you and your um, mining farm when you were mining Ethereum. That would be one of the first ones. So there you are. And yeah. where is that? So I built this farm in Compton, Los Angeles. Oh, another high district area. Yeah, um, <laughs> we, we leased the uh, dirtiest warehouse we could find, but it had a lot of electrical capacity. Okay. And wow. uh, me and a bunch of guys, we built about 100 or so GPU mining rigs. Okay. And it was really cool because with this farm, um, we kind of started Ethereum Classic. When Ethereum... Okay. Yeah, there was a smart contract called the DAO. Right. This is about a year or so ago. Uh, the DAO got hacked, and Ethereum wanted to change the entire consensus rules of the system to basically refund the investors in the DAO. Okay. And this is not the DAO, as in the, the stock DAO. Exchange. DAO, yeah. right? Yeah, DAO. Yeah. And uh, I said that that goes against everything that cryptocurrencies were invented to, right. you know, fix. Uh, you can't reverse transactions in cryptocurrency. You can't just do a chargeback. You might as well just run a bank if you're going to do a chargeback, right? Or do a bailout. So uh, I set all my miners to mine on the old consensus rules, which said that, yeah, you can't reverse the DAO transactions. And that blockchain became known as Ethereum Classic. Okay. So for a brief time, for about three days, I was the only uh, mining farm mining Ethereum Classic. So I mined about 26,000 Ethereum Classic in three days. Wow. And then the first exchange, Polenix, uh, started trading at like $1, $2 each. Right. Now I think it's about $35. Yeah, it's about $35 bucks for, for, for that. So, so you did this, but what happened to that, um, without getting into too much detail, what happened to that mining farm, that Ethereum mining farm? Um, well, let's just say we had some internal disputes. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> attorneys were involved. And, okay, and we we'll leave it at that. So we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. So then, so that was that. Was, but that was your first um, 
venture into this. So you got to know it and that understand was, it. That was the first serious mining farm. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes, um, some with people, some with technology, some with trading. But I learned the industry. Mm. That's right. And you learn by trial and error, not by trial and right. And you, your entire life has been a trial and... Uh, I, heard you say, I, heard you say, <laughs> I heard you say GPU, so we're using like NVIDIA, so were you, because they were early into GPU, and GPU's huge now with the new Titan and all that stuff, so... Yeah, they actually make GPUs specialized for mining right now, but okay. we were using totally off-the-shelf parts, yeah. and, um, y you know, it was just... A, a mining rig is basically a computer... With, a, with several power supplies and lots of GPUs just running this mining wow. software. And you just build a lot of these and you put them in a warehouse and you put lots of electricity into it and you overclock everything with custom BIOS ROM hacks and, wow. you know. Crank it up. Huh? Yeah, sometimes fires break out. <laughs> yeah, and I've heard about that. And so, and, and the largest miners right now, the best, so we'll go back to Bitcoin from a Bitcoin perspective. The largest miners are where? Because we hear about a bunch of places. Yeah, they're, the Bitcoin mining is all centralized in China right now. Okay. Actually, um, one big mining company called uh, Bitmain, they make these ant miners. Uh, they, oh, yes. they control the majority of the hash power in Bitcoin right now. And they, they mine almost uh, half of the Bitcoins right now. Wow. And they're located in China. Yes. Now, what about, there, I heard there's Bitcoin farms in like um, Iceland. Yeah, um, there's many farms there because they have geothermal power. Okay. And, um, you mm. know, it's very cold there. Mm -hmm. And so it, it makes sense to get cheap electricity and good cooling. Um, you know, there's a lot of space there. It, it's a good place to do it. Um, that's how I originally started thinking about how to do mining is to, you know, get the electricity really low yep. and, and the cooling and everything. And then I realized that if your strategy and business sense with, with mining is correct, Actually, the electrical bill can be, you know, an insignificant part of the business. Okay, so cool. So we're, we're actually, believe it or not, we're coming up on, on the break. Sure. And then what we're doing is we're going to come back and we'll talk about um, how much money you can make in Bitcoin money <laughs> or not. And then what you're doing going forward within, in this because you're starting a whole new project in this space. That's true, I am. That's going to be awesome. Awesome. And Angus has a, um, uh, a sign he found during... Christmas. A treat. He, want, he wants a to trick. show it to everybody, right so on. we'll do that. We'll anyway, Gordo the, the Tech Star here, Andrew the Security Guy, Jay Maurice the Wiz <laughs> is here. We're talking about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and the next wave of our lives. See you in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Aloha. My name is Mark Schwab. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Hey everybody, aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Studios. This is Hibachi Talk. We're talking Bitcoin, we're talking cryptocurrency, we're talking mining, and right now we're talking to Angus. Angus, what's up, buddy? How you doing, Andrew? Good, brother. That's awesome. You know, it's great. I got to leave it. Bitcoins in my pocket, you know. How you do? Yeah, I'm not going to well, let you get them. them. Yeah, I, got, I stole them from Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I did do the Mount Cox. He thing. gave me some. I didn't have to steal them. Yeah, you still got them. You make sure you return it to me. He's the guy got to give him a little back. I get it. JD, nice to see you there, lad. It's nice to meet you. You like my brother. You know. <laughs> It's one thing to watch you on TV. It's another thing to be right next, uh, you know, right next to you. <laughs> the, the famous guy. <laughs> you meet you. You in. feel the heat. <laughs> to meet me in personless. In <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Anyway, I, you know, it's, it's Christmas has passed. But you know, the other day there, I was walking around during Christmas, and we at least, we at least have a, a co-host, Mr. Rick Trejo, our Hispanic co-host, and I found this for him. So show you, we sign on this thing. You know, it's for lease. Not be done. <laughs> I had a great, yeah, I love, I love people who have intuition and do all this great a, stuff. That's a nice interpretation. Yeah, it's, a nice, it's, always, Good job. it's New Year coming up and we, you know, yeah, Hogmanay, as we call it in Scotland. 
See, don't get black coal to you on Hogmanay, so you know, make sure you enjoy it. So, <laughs> as I say at the end of your segment, let your wing gang free, where A you be. Aloha! Give me some more Bitcoin. Wow, thanks, Angus, for that. Or lease Navidad. Did you get that? That's pretty pretty sweet. So let's let's get into some let's get into some so deeper let's get tech. Tell yeah. me, I want to know about the future, so I know where to put my so, money. So you obviously <laughs> built the Ethereum mining um, farm in anticipation of making some good money. We did. And okay, glad to hear that. That's supposed to happen. And then, um, so now you're getting back into this, but why would you get back into it when you've got like the big players like China and those players and such like that? There's, you know, Bitcoin is so huge, there's plenty of room even for small fish. Okay. You know, oh. you know I, I, I'm kind of moving into Bitcoin mining now. Okay. And, you know, we, we place orders for hundreds of uh, ASIC mining rigs. These are very different from the GPU mining rigs that mm. I had. Oh, these are the new ones. Well, a, uh, Bitcoin has been uh, only ASIC mined for a long time now, mm -hmm. but the newest, newest ASIC miners, you know, I'm placing order for a few hundred, and they say the smallest order they have uh, after me is, you know, in the thousands of, of mining rigs. So it's, wow. we're, we're a very small fish, but it's still big for us, you know. It's still yeah, I wish I had a picture of a mining rig, because, well, you had a photo, but unfortunately it, it didn't, didn't convert across. But essentially it looks like a um, uh, generator. You know, it's, with a computer on it. It's a bunch of custom ASIC chips that do nothing but mine uh, Jeep, uh, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And they're just attached to this big heat sink with a bunch of big fans. And it blows a ton of air through it, uses a ton of electricity. And we put them all into this small warehouse. And, you know, we connect a whole megawatt of electricity or more to run all of these miners. And we blow a lot of air through it in the countryside, in the mountains, and uh, So your next one is, can, well, you, you, so, for security reasons, is your next one in this country or is it in another country? No, I'm mining in Japan now. Okay. And uh, the electricity there is very expensive compared to USA, where I was mining before. How's and, it compared to Hawaii? Oh, Hawaii is insanely expensive. Yeah. It's like 36 cents a kilowatt hour here. Yeah. I mean, if you have the best miners and you have a very efficient setup, you could probably still do very, very well in Hawaii. But if you're starting out, you'd probably want to do it somewhere, you know, in the Nevada desert, you know. Yeah, where they've got solar and they've got ways. To, I mean, I, I was talking to some of our legislators just last week, and they were saying they want to get involved in this, be able to enable this kind of thing to happen. And I like the look on your face right now. And I went, and they said, and actually, I was talking to the governor. And he said, why can this not happen? I said, two reasons. One is cost of electricity. And second is our education system sucks, and we're not educating educating people enough on well, I was just and now with that face to face with the governor and well, I said that I was him. thinking HECO doesn't pay as much for their power as we pay for ours so maybe they could get in the money. Yeah, do you think they <laughs> yeah, do you, yeah, well, right. Think the PUC so, yeah. allow that? Hey, they just PUC just gave them allowed them to do an increase on us after doing all this solar yeah, stuff. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. So come yeah. back to this. So now you're you you're 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 building or have built. We're building it now. Building it now. And uh, we're probably going to start mining um, with our first farm in Japan in the next few months. And it's a one megawatt facility. Okay. And um, yeah, we just we just got the latest ASICs, and uh, it's it's going to be awesome. And so how many so, how many transactions can you can you you know say with a megawatt per hour? Per, how do you how do you what do you, what do you project? So the way mining works is you're trying to solve the next block in the Bitcoin blockchain. Okay. And even with a huge one megawatt facility, I mean it's huge for us. We are only going to be able to solve a block maybe once every eight or ten days oh, after wow. this thing wow. is turned on. And you're going to get a small percentage of that, which will create another transaction that needs to be authenticated. Every block you solve in Bitcoin right now yeah. is 12 and a half Bitcoins for the block reward yeah. and maybe one or two Bitcoins uh, for the transaction fees for all the transactions you include in that block. So you're looking at, let's say for the sake of argument, 14 Bitcoins. Around so there. 14 Bitcoins sure. when you solve every, every time solve you block. solve one. And I'm going to sit here and do the math here while well, I'm sitting here. If you solved 14 every 15, 10 days, 000, you know. You know, 15,000 yeah, times 14 it. equals... What's the, what's the payment? Nah, did I just read that right? Yeah, if you solve one block in the Bitcoin blockchain, it's about a quarter million dollars right now. Yeah, $210,000. So, sure. so, so what's your, what's your, how does it work? What are you looking at? Five every years? 10 days, $210,000? Well, that's the thing, right? In the whole world, all the miners are trying to compete and they're yes. coming out with new chips and the mm. Bitcoin network readjusts the difficulty to make it harder to mine Bitcoin. Oh. So as, over time, the mining farm will mine less and less Bitcoin. Right. And so this, it's very competitive. Wow. It's all about So the, you got to keep rolling out new versions of farms every... 
Yeah, and it all comes Somewhat. down to how much electricity you have, mm -hmm. you know, I how see. much space you have. After a year or two, you might want to rip out your old gear and, and put in the newest gear and, you wow. know. What about the software behind doing the Bitcoin mining? I mean, can, can you improve that to make it more efficient? Not from a, a consumption standpoint, but from a um, speed standpoint on, on how that's been coded, because you've been coding for decades. Well, everyone uses mining pools, and we, okay. have, we run our own private mining pool. But the mining software and the mining pool software, it's all pretty much the same. Okay. It, it comes down to raw computational power. Okay, so let me ask you this question. So I don't, I don't have the money to build a farm and do all this kind of stuff. Is, is there a way that, that someone can invest into someone like yourself who is building these farms and then um, uh, uh, you're like a startup? So it's like, a, I think it's Shark Tank or something like that where I'm going to put some money into this and then... You're going to not guarantee me, but you know, say essentially you could possibly get this return. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, we, the way uh, we structure the new business is we're kind of like a vendor. And if you have space and power and the logistics to do it, we will essentially build a farm for you. And we just take a percentage of the earnings. Oh, wow. oh my house on the big island. That's not a bad deal. Which is freaking cold all the time. <laughs> it ain't that cold. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of heat. This is a lot of heat. That I might turn, it, that place, turn your put, place into a mall, mall in, cabin. I can put it in the garage, man. It's just like the garage is always in the city. I don't think it's big enough. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you usually want to do at least one megawatt to start. Yeah, so well, I don't know how much power yeah, you got yeah. there. Helco, thanks a and lot. I'd be really happy with what I'm saying. suck up all of the Waimea. Waimea would have no power forever. Yeah, so in Hawaii, it's kind of tough, but there are many places in the world where it, it just makes sense. So legislators, can I just pay, insert my little comment? Hawaii is kind of tough. Again, once again, you shut down Coinbase here. You know, <laughs> shut down Coinbase. You make it real difficult for me to start up my ATM for Bitcoin purchasing. And now you've got an electricity bill that's you know off the scale. And you said, oh, we want to bring Amazon here. Or we want to bring so-and-so here. Yeah. yeah right. I just don't Dream think we're going to compete. But what's the future look like? I mean, so where's this going? I mean, well, you're dropping in... You're in the business of installing one megawatt farms, or, or as big as they'll let you, you know, whatever they can Using handle. Bitcoin to pay for it. But I mean, yeah. I mean, the future of Bitcoin, it's, it's the new global financial system. Oh, yeah. You know, we're talking about disrupting banks and government, and, and this is going to change the world more than the internet has, right? I mean, in it our seems to be as quickly <laughs> as anything I've ever seen. In our lifetime, you know, the internet has only had a few apps that really took on, and they're mostly just communication or sharing some data. This is money. Mm. This is the internet of yeah. money, and it's going to disrupt everything. Yeah. It's going to change the world. It's the biggest transfer of wealth in our lifetime. That's true. So think about it. The biggest transfer of wealth in our lifetime, and governments think they're going to shut it down. Yeah, how, well, how many, I mean... You know what? I just, I can ignore the government What's the market to cap for it to just... Uh, 200, uh, on Bitcoin today, it's 260 billion today. 260 billion. billion so today. what was it four years ago? Three years. What was it last oh, year? Oh, it was like... Half of that last year? Yeah, or less. Or less. Not even that, way less. So, I mean... And, 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 and we haven't started using it to buy things yet, which we can, though. A yeah. lot of us are holding it. Right. Right now, Bitcoin is really good at a store of value. Yes. And next, you're going to see the layer two payment networks coming online. This is the Lightning Network and all these payment channel things where it's going to be almost free to do transactions. And then not only will Bitcoin have the store of value really solid, but also have the medium of exchange function of money. So here's the, here's the dilemma we have. We're going to watch it unfold over the next number of years. I'm sitting on a U.S. dollar that's worth so much, but it doesn't fluctuate in value like Bitcoin does. Sure. So I can go buy my Starbucks with it and so on. I'm sitting on a Bitcoin right now that can go from $20,000 like it was seven days ago to $13,000, which it was seven days later. So do I sit, hold on it, whatever? So I'm not, I personally, I'm not using it to buy anything yet. At what point do you think people start using it to buy things? Well, we used Bitcoin for years to buy a coffee at the cafe and whatnot. But just true. You gave me my first Bitcoin to buy Starbucks. I don't even want to think of what I paid for that Starbucks. Yeah, now. it was an expensive. In today's <laughs> terms, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's, but he's in the mine, from the mining perspective, I love how you, they're making new Bitcoin. They're creating new Bitcoin by solving it. Right, the because so. until Bitcoin reaches a certain critical mass of mainstream adoption, uh, the network collectively you know, rewards the miners for providing that security, for True. running these big data centers of mm -hmm. miners. And at a certain point, um, the block reward will get smaller and smaller, and the transaction fees will get bigger and bigger. And at that point, uh, the miners will be just be purely compensated on transaction fees alone. I see. 
So but right. that shouldn't that should not come close to the so transaction it, fee on a credit card. But I'm saying, but it's still it's so I hope not. Specul speculative now to be building mining facilities, right? Because you're you're betting on going to get, still make get I th more coin. I think it's going to make uh, it, you're going to be able to mine Bitcoin for years and years. Oh, so you're talking about maybe a decade or more? Like because it's going to be a while before it comes down to. I mean, when, when Bitcoin is $100,000 or one Bitcoin is a million dollars, you know, when more and more people join the system, even if you can only mine a tiny fraction of a Bitcoin, it's going to be worth so much. And there's a finite number, 21 million when, they finally, when, the, fi when the final number is worth 16 million and change. 21 million is going to be the cap on the, the cap. Max. 20, so we can't print more coins. We right. can't print more money. This Did is they what print the, coins? <laughs> actually, it was the guy selling them, and they were actually. I saw the guy uh, in New York was selling the Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese's coins are big ones. People bought them. Oh, well. So, so okay, we got uh, not too much time left. So, what's what's your commentary on the future of where this thing is going and what's happening? I next? mean, simply put, Bitcoin is the future of money. You know, you're talking total crypto anarchism, where banks are going to be printing money like crazy, but because of the fixed supply of Bitcoin, it's going to gain value very rapidly. You're going to see a hyperinflation of fiat currencies. You know, one Bitcoin is going to be worth millions of dollars because of the fixed supply. I mean, how many people do you own, do you know, who own one ton of gold? You know? Yeah. <laughs> True. No. Fort Knox, I don't even know if they have a ton. That's a lot. I mean, that's, that's, if you do the math, there's only 21 million Bitcoins. How many people are in, in the world, right? That's right. And there's only 5 million in Bitcoin right now, something kind of low. I think about 17 million have been mined already. Okay. And quite a number of them have been lost. No, but too. individual people that oh, are yeah. invested. It's only like it's, it's five million people who have invested in Bitcoin. Right. Hardly any people are using. Oh, I see. So you're gonna. This is this is really the biggest transfer of wealth in our lifetime, and it's going to replace banks and fiat currency. You know, it'll be like the internet. Maybe it takes 20, 30 years to reach mainstream adoption, where everyone has Bitcoin in their pocket. It's coming. It's pretty cool. It's be. pretty cool. That's so, that, so awesome. Anyway, we we burned through and 28 lighting. minutes. So, uh, JD, we're gonna um, um, we'll Skype you in for an update. We gotta bring you in when you go back to Japan. We'll Skype I'll you come in. Welcome back for and you, we'll, Gordo. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's a millionaire sitting on all his Bitcoin. Mind <laughs> you, he lost. His, he, he's no, that's another story. This is not good. This is not for the faint of heart. We've told everybody we're not giving investment advice. Cryptocurrencies are, are not for the faint of heart. Volatile. It's very volatile. Um, you got to believe in what's happening in the future. Anyway, um, we have somewhere around here a uh, autographed solo cup. I'm not quite finished yet. Number 145 in the series. So don't lose this puppy. It could be worth. Well, it's only 145. Bitcoin could be <laughs> bills at one day. There's going to be a lot of zeros in <laughs> there. A lot in there. Anyway, thank you for coming all the way from, from yeah, man, Japan, thank you. celebrating Christmas with us. You head back shortly. And um, keep us posted on what's going on. We didn't give you a heads up on this, um, on what we do at the end of every every show, but okay. we'll do it. And you can just look into the camera and, and, and look smart like you always do. <laughs> so like we say at the end of every show, when you enjoy the show, when he bought you talks, the people listen. One, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing? <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. I could spend another two Good hours job. on this. Good job. Good job.